Hey guys, Brian the Cell Phone Guy here again. Today we're going to take a second look at the Sonom XP3, which is the flip phone that Sonom came out with in uh, July of 2019. So I've been using this phone off and on for the past two years, and I just wanted to come back to it and uh, give a little bit of an update with some added thoughts. It's been a very popular phone, and I'm still getting a lot of comments and questions uh, from people that are buying the phone, and uh, that's why we're going to take another look at it. So first thing I want to do is I want to just give you an overview of the body of the phone. So on the left-hand side here, you're going to notice this giant yellow and black button. And that's the push to talk button. Uh, this phone, like all Sonom phones, has a push to talk service, which essentially makes the phone work like it was a two way radio. Now, this is more of the type of feature that you're going to see in fleet phones and not the kind of thing that the average consumer is going to subscribe to. So, I'll show you some other things you can do with that button a little later on. Underneath that, you have the volume up and the volume down button. On the other side, you have a 3.5mm headset jack, which is something a lot of phones have gone away from, but Sonom still does. And then here you have the charging port, and this uses a standard USB-C uh, charging connector, which is uh, very convenient. Now, on the back of the phone, if we take the battery out, what you're going to see is that the phone has a couple of different SIM card slots. So it has one on this side, which is SIM card number one. It has one on this side, which is SIM card number two. And it has a micro SD memory card slot for uh, storing uh, music and pictures and things like that. Now, in Canada, dual SIM technology is not supported yet. So it's very important that you put the SIM card into SIM card slot number one. If you're in a European country or somewhere else where dual SIM is supported, then you need to uh, choose the appropriate SIM card slot for what you want to do. So to turn the phone on, we push and hold the red button until we feel a vibration, and then we just give it a second uh, while it turns on. So this phone has a very standard keyboard the way any flip phone has. So basically it's the one to nine keys plus the star and the pound key. Here we have the, uh, send, the end button, which is also the power on and off. Here we have the send button, which is the button you use to begin your phone calls. It has a very good loudspeaker. Uh, this button will do backing up one screen at a time. This is the clear key if you've made a mistake with your text entry. This is the app tray button, which opens up all the applications that the phone comes preloaded with. And this is the menu key, and that allows you to get into some of the features uh, into level two. And then in the center of the phone, we have what they call um, the function button. And this will give you a right, a left, an up or a down, and an enter. So if you see a list appear on the screen, you can scroll up the list or down the list. And if you see icons on the screen, you can scroll left and right to choose the one that you want. Now, it's very important to realize who this phone is designed for. Then, judging by the number of comments that I get on this phone, uh, a lot of people buy this phone not fully understanding this. So let's be really clear. This is a wonderful phone to buy if your primary thing that you're looking for is phone calls. It's not a good phone to buy if you want to do anything in the data world. So this phone does have very limited data capability, but I would suggest that you just ignore it because the screen is too small and the navigation is too clumsy and it's just not designed for that. If you want to make phone calls and you need a durable phone, this is the way to go. If you need anything else, you should be looking at the Sonom XP8, which is their uh, fully functioning smartphone, which runs Android 10 and will do everything that any other Android 10 phone will do. Now, there are a couple of features that this phone does have that you wouldn't expect on a, uh, on a basic flip phone. Uh, so let's just take a look at that. If we go into the app tray and then we scroll over to applications and we open that up, you're going to see that this phone does have a music tab, but you do have to have a uh, micro SD card with your music stored on there in order to play that. It does have an FM radio, which works surprisingly well. Uh, so basically you highlight FM radio and you hit the OK button and it tells you that you need to connect a headset. So if we just open up the flap and we connect a headset and then we push the OK button, which is the center, it'll launch and it picks up the, uh, the basically the channel that you've turned to and it'll start to play the music and it actually works quite well as an FM radio. To disconnect the FM radio, you simply 
unplug the headset and it disengages. Now, one of the other beauties about this phone, uh, now that we're still involved in COVID, is the ability to sterilize it. So this phone can be completely submerged in a mixture of bleach and water or hydrogen peroxide for sterilization purposes. And this makes it uh, very popular with people in the first responder and the healthcare fields. And there's another full video on this channel on how to sterilize your phone. So take a look at that if that is of interest to you. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the messaging because this is different from what most people will want to do with messaging. So if you have a full-featured smartphone and you're used to the type of text messages that you can send, this one is going to be a bit of a turnoff for you. So you have to either get used to this or you have to be the kind of person that doesn't send a lot of texts and you're okay with uh, this version. So let me just show you what I mean. If you go to the app tray and you scroll up to the messaging button and you open that up and then you push OK, it's going to give you a history of your messages. And this just happens to be the thread that I have open now. So if you want to send a message, first thing we're going to do is push and hold the star key. And that's going to bring up your language choices. Now, as I say, I'm in Canada, so this gives me a choice of English or French. If you're in the States, it's going to give you a choice of English or Spanish. And we're going to stick with English for this one. Now, the other thing I want to point out, and this might be a little hard to see, up here you see ABC, but you'll notice that the A is capitalized and the BC isn't. So what that means is that in this mode the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized and the rest is going to be lowercase. Now, if you push the pound key, you'll notice that changes to all caps. So your entire text message is going to be in caps. If you push it again, it gives you one, two, three, and this allows you to put in uh, numbers instead of letters. If you push it again, it gives you T9EN. Now, the EN is for English. If I had chosen French, it would give me T9FR. And if you push it again, you're going to get T9 with a capital E-N. And that's the same thing where the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. And there we have T9 E-N where everything is capitalized. Now, T9 takes some getting used to. And basically, it's a shortcut where the system kind of picks up the word that it thinks you want. And then you just enter that. So let's just, uh, let's just give that a try. So let's say that the first word that we want to put in here is the name Tom. So what we're going to do, T is on the 8 and the O and the M are on the number 6. So if we push 866, it's going to give us some choices. Now, it doesn't know if we want the word 2, T-O-O, or if we want U-M-M, or we want T-O-M, or we want V-O-N. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to scroll across till we hit the word Tom, and then we're going to push Enter, and it's going to put in the word Tom. So this thing will learn over time the kind of uh, vocabulary that you're used to, and it will start to automatically recognize those, those words. But there are times when you're trying to put in a word and it just will not give you the word that you want. And then basically what you have to do is you have to toggle with the pound key to get back to the ABC so that you can put in the word uh, properly. So if you wanted to put in Tom with the ABC method, you would push the 8, then you would pause for a second, then you would push 666, which gives you the letter O, then pause for a second, and then push the six again, and that's going to give you the word Tom. So like I say, it does take a little bit of getting used to, and it's the kind of thing that is not meant for people that are sending uh, many, many texts in a day. So if you're the kind of person, like I say, your primary function is phone calls, then this is definitely the phone for you. And the three-year warranty is better than any other warranty of any other phone that I've seen. Uh, it basically covers everything that you could possibly do to this phone. The only thing that's not covered is loss or theft. So it's definitely worth looking for if you are in a ruggedized environment or you're a company that has a lot of uh, uh, staff that are a little bit hard on their phones. Uh, this can really help you control your, your telecom budget. So like I said, I give this phone uh, like a nine out of 10. Uh, for doing what it does well, uh, but it's not the kind of phone that you want to buy if you need uh, data or 
Google Maps or anything that's a full-featured smartphone, uh, then you should really be looking at the Sonom XP8. So that's all we have for now. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel so that we can keep bringing these to you. If you have any questions, please reach out to me in the comments section and I will do my best uh, to get back to you in a timely manner. Thanks for watching.